Welcome to the Lodge Lockdown with your host, Frank Cronog. Hello and welcome. Uh, to uh, another Lodge Lockdown. And what a show we've got. What a show we've got for you tonight. What? Sorry, Valerie? Yes, Valerie remi- has informed me that we do indeed have a show for you tonight. So, you know, it's always, there's always, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. And before we go into all the, the, the stuff that we will be doing in the show, let's introduce you. Wow. incredible guests. First up is the beautiful lady that's one of my, my friends, I'm happy to say. Uh, she was in uh, episode six of The Return, Twin Peaks season three, as I like to call it. Uh, and it was a very sad scene, but something good did come out of it as a memory, I think. The fact that she worked with the great Harry Dean Stanton himself. It is Lisa Coronado. Hey, hello. And that is a good good part of that scene, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Lisa. And, and she's on screen now. Uh, she did have a, a bit of a problem getting the car started there. But tonight, or even today, where she is, as I can see daylight outside. But it's tonight here, where regardless of where it is and you're wherever you are, she, she <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, but she has to get a car started and she's here today. And it's only Andrea Hayes. Welcome, Andrea. Hi, welcome. Welcome me. No, um, it's actually midnight here. I just have a really good gapper that can shoot day for night and night for day. <laughs> I, see, yeah, I see that, yeah. It's got a good arc light, yeah. But welcome yeah. to my car. <laughs> and is Bob. Get to see the as well. Yeah. This is a rare, a rare moment. So, Andrew, lovely to have you, Andrea. And the penultimate guest is the young lady who uh, played Victoria. Um, although she wasn't named on the screen, I don't think, but she did have a name badge with her name on it. Uh, Victoria, the checkout girl, who had a great scene with Grace Sabrisky, may not come in. So to make her feel welcome, uh, Zoe, I've got you, uh, 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 you know, some of that stuff there. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's great. Uh, oh, my gosh. You know, you know, at home. Uh, so here we go. It's the wonderful Zoe McLean. There she is. Hi. You can, you can all hear this one. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so there she is, yeah. And uh, finally... I wouldn't be able to do this show without this lovely lady, this creative spark uh, that uh, you know energizes me so much, and she's a wonderful help to help. And uh, it's none other than the wonderful Minnie Moo from Australia. Thank you, Minnie, for being here. You're welcome. Right. Okay. We have. A, a, a ton of stuff to get through, for God's sake. And uh, I mean, I don't know where to start, but I have to start somewhere. Well, we've got two topics tonight, one of which is uh, what are some, you can say one or you can say more, it depends, some of the biggest challenges you have faced in your life so far. So far. And the second one is inventions. What ones do you think has changed the world and, and uh, or has proved to be of no use whatsoever? So that's the two topics there. I will also be picking a random uh, name out of the random machine uh, to answer five random questions on the spot. So whoever it is, be ready, be ready. And I will be reading a random fact to you all, which I hopefully will absolutely blow your minds, in, uh, you know, with uh, fascination. So there we go. That's the topics. Um, I've introduced the guests, so I feel really good about that. So let's get cracking. First of all, the first topic of discussion is uh, 
What are some of the biggest challenges you have faced in your life so far? Now, this could be good or bad. Um, but everything, you know, life is set to try us and challenge us. So, who would like to start? Well, I'll start. I'll just say that I think this year's <coughs> been a challenge for a lot of people. I would say bring on 2021, but far out if this is any indication, no thanks. <laughs> but yeah, this year's been challenging. Just having to think about, I'm a bit of a homebody, so it hasn't impacted me too much in a way, but just having to think about planning, just should there end up being no money and no jobs and, you know, things getting worse, things that you didn't have to think about before. Yeah. So this year's been challenging, I think. Yeah. I would definitely agree. I mean, for one, Hollywood is pretty much entirely shut down. Broadway is shut down. Pretty much every artist right now can't really work because a lot of our jobs require being around a lot of people, and that's just not a thing right now. So I would agree with you on that. <laughs> so what's happened over there with, like, your... What, what sports are really popular over there, like, say, basketball or whatever? What's happening there? Are you, people still allowed to play basketball or baseball or not? Everyone's just... Uh, soccer's still... I think the soccer, MLS soccer is still going, but nobody can attend the games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about the rest of the sports. That's the sport that we follow. Yeah. I think, like, they're doing... Or they were doing reruns of games for, like, football, I think. I don't know... Well, I mean, I guess it's not football season, so they wouldn't be doing it anyway. I don't really know anything about sports, so <laughs> I'm not super up on it. But I know I've heard people complaining about the fact that they're watching reruns for most of football season. <laughs> so. That would suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my father used to watch reruns all the time. He was a <clears throat> huge Nebraska fan. And he would tape the games. So when he had insomnia, he'd just pop in a game for it may have been from 10 years ago, whatever, and he'd watch a Nebraska football game. So, Wow. <laughs> it's a bit of a maybe, shame. Maybe he just bet on it because yeah. he knows who's going to win. Yeah. He just enjoyed the game so much. Yeah. That's cute. I get that. And it probably was comforting. I mean, I used to pop on reruns of um, Star Trek The Next Generation. I had on like VHS from when I was a kid. So when I couldn't sleep, that would go on and it was just so comforting. You know, I'm just, I can understand. Maybe he felt that way about sports. Well, Nebraska. Just Nebraska? <laughs> yeah. It was one of the colleges he went to. So, and he was from Omaha. So, oh. Cornhuskers. Go Cornhuskers. <laughs> is that actually the name of the team? Yeah, they used to be the Bug Eaters, but um, then what? it got changed to the Corn Huskers. Seriously, it's like both my parents attended um, University of Nebraska. Um, as a matter of fact, my mother was in the theater department with Johnny Carson, and they were buddies. So, wow. yeah, <laughs> I have a great photo of them getting drunk at a party together. So. <laughs> That sounds like your parents have very good stories. <laughs> they, had, they, they had great stories. They were both passed on, but uh, you know. they, both were, they were both born in the 20s, which is why I think now that the 20s are here again, I'm going, wait, does that make me an adult? <laughs> My parents were born like 100 years ago. Wait, hold on. So <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, I'm sorry, Frank. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Your biggest challenge. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I almost forgot what it was myself. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, what was, what's your, um, what's your biggest I think this is a shared so challenge. Far? I think this is a shared challenge, this corona, but yeah, personally. Oh, sorry. It's certainly the COVID thing is a challenge, but I mean, uh -huh. uh, is there anything uh, um, before that, you know? At any point in your life where you felt, you know, something big, fairly big had to be overcome in your life? I'll go. Uh, I mean, I've been pretty open. Um, I, I had a 
I led a pretty great life. I had a really good family. I have a very good family. Um, and, you know, just being pursuing being an actor was always just a little bit tough. But I didn't really have any challenges until uh, I got sick like three years ago. I fell sick with what they thought was mono um, and it turned into a chronic illness that I might have Lyme disease. And so my whole last three years have been a completely rearrange of my life. Um, I haven't been able to really act on, on set because I don't have the energy um, or my health is so unpredictable that, you know, I could feel good and book a job and then the next week feel awful and so it was a struggle. So it was really trying to figure out how do I be creative because I'm just an artist to my soul and still create and connect, um, but from a limited capacity. So with, you know, the whole COVID thing happening, I had already gotten used to being isolated, um, you know, and uh, so I was able to just kind of work through that with uh, streaming. I started streaming online. Um, I started writing a lot. Um, it's completely changed my life because I'm such a like, I want to do all the things all the time, like everything, experience everything. And FOMO was terrible that I dealt with. I had a huge fear of missing out and uh, it's really forced me to mm, thr like settle in and meditate and do all these things that I never thought that I would be like that kind of person. So I'm still working through it. I still have not overcome it. So, <laughs> but it's been rough. That's probably the roughest for me. Yeah, difficult, very difficult for you. I know I've been you following know. your journey online, so yeah, it's good for you to be sharing for other people who are yeah. going through. Yeah, and especially with, now with the COVID stuff, there's a lot of people that are dealing with post-viral syndrome, which is what I've been living with, so I'm like, oh man, so you know, any way that I can reach out and help other people because I've, I'm so far into it now that I've accepted it or before I just didn't and pushed against it. And now I'm like finding ways to, to, to deal with it. Um, I just couldn't be private. Like my dad's really private about his stuff. And my husband's super private and I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. This is what's happening. Cause I can't, it's hard. The more I sit on it, the more I feel lonely. So I think it's like, both ways of wanting to reach yeah. out and help and also help myself. Yeah. And how about you, um, Zoe? What, what's, what, what do you think your, your biggest challenge has been so far? Oh, goodness. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say that I've been flawed. I know that there's a lot of people who've been through way more than I have. And I feel like I've had a very easy, happy life, and I have a good family. I have uh, an amazing boyfriend. I think, if anything, one of the biggest challenges I've had is I've had really bad luck with friends, and I've had some of the people who I've considered like best friends really close have always turned on me. And... Uh, done something not just like minor just something horrific to me and it's this horrible big blowout because they just completely make up a lie about me or say something really mean to me and then block me and it's happened with everyone I've ever been close to like I can't have a close friend without them just going completely mad and blocking me out of nowhere and that's really sucked and I actually was just thinking about that today because I drove past one of my ex best friends and I saw her like I guess she was on her lunch break at work and it just made me really sad because I miss being friends with her but I also don't because she was terrible to me like the entire time so time I was with her so I've had a lot of trouble with just friendships um, yeah. over pretty much my entire life <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't know if that counts, but <laughs> I think it counts. I am, and just to give you some, I, I mean, you know, I'm an eccentric maiden aunt and a wise woman, so I will just tell you that, yeah, it sucks, and a lot of times you learn, you know, you learn and grow more ab about yourself in the ages of 18 to 25 than you will, you know, since you were a child and learning to walk and everything. So part of that is that people are also discovering themselves and so continue to stand up for yourself because uh, it's an old hooker once told me life's too short to dance with ugly men so you just <laughs> you know take that advice and just you know you don't have to be friends with these people oh, you know? yeah 
Well, and so don't 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 discount it. You know, you will get some good close friends eventually. But uh, yeah, I didn't find know. my like soulmate, best friend, girlfriend until I was thirty, and so wow, yeah. I think you know my twenties were filled with figuring out who I was and and everybody else and I also had a kid at 19 so my life was so different than anybody else's um but in my 30s I started cementing these really phenomenal female friendships and I was like oh my god this is what people talk about you know yeah. before that I was like oh, I'm just gonna be friends with dudes because it's like no drama <laughs> <laughs> and uh and then I finally was like oh okay I need these women in my life that are empowering and wonderful and supportive and the people that I can talk to um, about anything, so you'll find them. I'm sorry, yeah. it sucks. I hate, I hate that feeling of betrayal with friends. It's the worst. Yeah. But yeah. it's also, um, if you've never been sad, how will you know when you're happy? That's so true. It's like it sucks that you have to go through it, but um, you got to go through it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with I life. <laughs> I appreciate that. That really means a lot uh, from both of you. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I guess it's my turn to, yeah. So my, I mean, like I said, I, this COVID thing's like a shared bad thing, but mine was, um, you know, I was a nurse and a few years ago I was assaulted protecting an 80 year old woman from a mugger. And uh, I decided, you know, Hey, no, you can't do that. And then he, beat the hell out of me instead broke three bones and uh, you know two operations and whatnot and then basically ended my nursing career um lost use of one hand for a while just so couldn't start an iv um got super depressed couldn't do anything so i gained 100 pounds and then twin peaks came about and i was like oh gosh i don't want to be on camera and then i'll fuck it excuse me for swearing, but it's like, whatever. And I knew, you know, I even joked at the costume fitting, I'm going, okay, I just know that um, the comment section is going to be full of, oh, she had third on not forks this morning, or, oh, gee, Heidi sure gained weight. And it got even worse. I got uh, internationally body shamed. And I was thinking, you guys don't know what I went through. And then, um, you know, it's like, yeah, I know. I know exactly what I look like and I know why and actually when we were filming season three I was having terrible symptoms that turned out to be ovarian cancer god I'm a Dickensian orphan but um but you know and I knew something was wrong when we were filming and then got the diagnosis and got you know so it underwent everything I'm free I'm cancer free now but uh but yeah so it was um it was interesting to see the comment section and then what was heartening are the people who didn't, who also didn't know me, who were defending me. And, and I was just like, this is so bizarre because these people don't even know me and they're, they're being terrible, you know, because I'm fat. Uh, you know, um, okay, <laughs> whatever. So, yeah, so it was just a couple of bad things one right in a row so um the coronavirus it's almost like yeah whatever this is this is easy i can deal deal with this but uh yeah so there you have it <laughs> wow <laughs> but i'm wow. cancer free that's cancer amazing. free and and i only have to sometimes use my cane so <laughs> Um, I'm pleased to, I'm pleased to clear that you know, I'm yep. mm -hmm. So instead of full-time nursing, I am now a set medic and a COVID compliance officer now. So fancy. Yeah, I get to go around, you know, with a bejeweled uh, temperature gun, like stop, halt, COVID compliance <laughs> officer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm going to let the power go to my head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, <clears throat> I've never openly said that. My friends know, but just by the way, just this is the first time that um, I've ever, you know, that I'm saying this online. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. 
Oh, thank, thank you. Because you know, it's very difficult, I know. And um, you share something so so personal like that, you know, that you have to live with. It's a very personal thing. Um, right. Um, what we're going to do now is, is I'm going to change uh, the mood here in a way, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to give you a random fact. Are you ready? Here we go. Scientists discovered an organism with a disappearing butt. It's called the comb jelly or sea walnut. Wait, its butt disappears? Like it just like shows up and then disappears and then shows up? Yeah. Or, or is it doing crunches? <laughs> it can it can it, it can it can make its butt vanish at will. Why? Yeah. Butt to vanish. Yeah, what is the purpose? Yeah. <laughs> what it why did it evolve to do that? Um, um well unless it just wants to ward off, you know, being mated or something. I don't know. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. But maybe, you know, yeah. maybe okay. they, maybe, well, we won't go into gory details there, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, but I like the fact that it's called, uh, it's, its nickname is the sea walnut, which I think is rather cute. Yeah. Um, so that's your random fact, mate. Uh, so that's, uh, we'll consign that to the bin, uh, to the trash bin, I think that one, yeah. Uh, so next up is the one you've all been waiting for, or, or not, the case may be. Because one of you has to answer five random questions on the spot, uh, and I have, I'm, I'm going to pick them out from my random. Uh, oh, I've uh, got to leave now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's that? You're cutting out. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going through a tunnel. I, <laughs> There's an earthquake. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> you, go through, you go through the. Uh, you go through the. What do you call it? The. Um, the thing in Twin Peaks, what's that whirly thing? What was it called? The, the vortex or something? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Vortex. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, so here we go. I'm going to pick it out. I'm going to do a random shuffle. I don't know if you can hear that. There's no <laughs> space there on this show. We, we have paper and pen. Uh, so there we go. So one of these ones is uh, uh, going to be the, uh, the guest. And who will it be? I know you're all on tender hooks. So here we go. I'm going to open it up and reveal it now. On air. Uh, dun, dun, dun. It is. Lisa. Oh, boy. <laughs> Lisa. What you don't know is that Lisa was written on all pieces of the paper. Why, <laughs> 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 order? I wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't do that. All right, okay, Lisa, are you ready? All right. Yes, my improv skills are kicking in. <laughs> your, first, your first question is, name a flower. A flower? Yeah. Uh, peony. No, the answer was self-raising. Uh, <laughs> do you think, are you sure, this would be up your alley, uh, 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 um, Lisa, because you have worked with them. Do you think Zombies have the upper hand. Yeah. We got to be yeah. smarter. We got to be smarter. They have like one goal is to eat your brains. They don't get distracted by anything else. That's a the good point there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you like Sunday? Do I like Sunday? Yes. Uh, can you sing I Will Always Love You while standing on your head? I mean, back when I did yoga, sure. Uh, and your final question, would you like to be miniaturized for a day? Like Ant-Man? Mm. Yeah. No, I think I'd be too scared I'd get stepped on. Oh. I mean, yeah. we, we, We'd have to look after you like, like uh, they did in Honey, We Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. You can live in my dollhouse. Oh, but your haunted dollhouse? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the place to put you, Lisa, yeah. <laughs> I, see, I see a movie script coming in my head right 
<laughs> of all the locations, let's put let's put you in a haunted doll's house. Right. Yeah. That would really make me feel better. Yeah. Uh, so that was your five questions, Lisa. You you scored um, well. You scored them all, I think. Well, I screwed up the self rising, but yes. <laughs> and you and um, your prizes, uh, you get, uh, you get one of them. Yeah. Uh, I get jerky, beef jerky. <laughs> it's barbecue beef. Uh, so I don't know. I hope you like that one. Yeah. I love um, barbecue. I'll send that uh, to you by snail mail uh, very soon. <laughs> okay. Well, thank God it's jerky and won't rot, right? Right. That's not the last. <laughs> outlast the zombies. And uh, that's the random questions. Yeah. So that was rather groovy. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Um, so our, our final topic for this, for this uh, proceedings is inventions. Right. We all, we all um, interact with them mostly, you know, a lot of our household appliances have been invented by someone. Um, but what are the good ones, do you think, and what are the complete rubbish ones? So let's see what you think. What do you think was a really good invention, and what do you think was the most useless one you've ever uh, heard of? Well, I, my man Elias Howe always has my heart. He invented the sewing machine, and being a costume designer, go Elias. Okay. And he did it for his mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. And that sweet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Useless invention, I guess, would be the um, battery-operated uh, cardigan. What? It's not where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think that would be a pretty useless invention. Yeah. Oh, I thought it existed, and I just have missed out on that somehow. Oh. <laughs> like a heat pad cardigan? <laughs> no, just battery operated. Oh. <laughs> like, does it put it on for you? Like, it's I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll try to think of while everyone's answering. I'll actually try to think of a bad one, so, a real one. Okay. I have a bad one. Saran wrap. I hate that stuff. It never works. <laughs> uh, it usually makes me more angry than any, anything. <laughs> uh, and my good invention, will it be a discovery? Does penicillin count? Because that's definitely saved my life a few times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so the plumbing. That's the yeah. Without plumbing doubt. discovered that. So I'm happy I live in an era where penicillin exists. Yeah. I would agree completely on that one. Yeah. Uh, what about you, uh, 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 Minnie? What do you think is the great, the greatest invention and the most useless? Well, I think I've got one answer for both, and that's the internet. I think the internet is great, right. and then sometimes the internet's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes, yeah, 50 50 one, that, yeah. yeah. It does good things, and then it can be a complete uh, horror as well, in many ways. Particularly when it's not working properly, or just simply the people you sometimes have to interact with, which can make things very unpleasant. Most of these forums and things like that, which I've tried to stay clear of, obviously. Uh, well, people Maybe making people comments and upsetting people like Andrea, that's what I'm talking exactly. about, just these key yeah, that kind of thing. And when the big troll comes out, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The internet trolls, they can and go predators, away. Predators getting online and trying to get the attention of children and things like that. So, I mean, look, it's yeah. great. You can shop from your couch or sofa, whatever you want to call it. You can do your shopping. You can link in with friends. But then there's, yeah, there's a yucky side of it too. Of I'm course. always being asked for photos of my feet. What the hell? Have you looked up? There's somebody stuck me in the feet Wikipedia. They have I'm on that too. Yes, they stick <laughs> people's feet. Like like when you do, you know, press things or any photo that you've posted where your feet are, they'll start sticking them in there. You might wow. be there, Andrea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have very pretty feet. So, you know, it's like all years of pounding them out on the nursing floor. So... Yeah, and they were they were Fred Flintstone feet to begin with, and now you know. <laughs> Send a picture of your feet in some flippers or something. Yeah, like I'm some like bare slippers. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, okay, I mean, I'm tempted to actually do it, and then they'll never bother me again. 
<laughs> Melt some butter over them. Just make it like <laughs> really no, that really might, uh, that might uh, yeah, that might actually. From what I understand about people with a foot fetish, that might actually get me some extra money. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> hey, sure, I'd give you photos of my feet if you were actually going to pay, but I want the money first. Yep. <laughs> So, I know a good invention, um, well, I've never used it, but it's one my great-grandfather got the patent for. Um, he was from Scotland and then was in uh, Montreal and was talking about the traffic and how bad the traffic was getting. And, you know, all the accidents were happening in the winter. So, he came up with a brand new uh, a system for braking. Um, yeah, um, sleds, uh, horse-drawn sleds. <laughs> so... This is way back to my great grandfather. So, and I have the original patent uh, for it, you know, with all the stamps and everything on it. But uh, it, it just is funny because he's like, traffic's getting even worse, and we need to find a way to stop these horse-drawn sleds on the hills. So, <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> try that sometime. <laughs> yeah, too bad we don't use horse-drawn sleds because now I own the patent. <laughs> <laughs> You can bring them back in style. Yeah, maybe yeah. Yeah, post apocalypse. I'll just show up. You know, the zombies will be coming at me, but I'll go, hey, 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 we have to return to horse drawn sleds. <laughs> the zombies Perfect, can power the sleds. Yeah. Yeah. You could have some. You could That's have, smart. Uh, you could we have can train people. them. Yeah. You could have people on the back of the sled, uh, um, you know, with a sword, a big sword or something, you know, <laughs> slaying the zombies because she's, she's used to fighting zombies, you see. So without her leaving, leaving the patrol. Or you yeah. just have them, you know, harnessed to a yoke and then have a big stick with a bag of meat hanging in front of it so they're constantly yes. going. Okay. And then, you know, you just pull the bag up when you want them to stop. And then, you know, <laughs> we're going to do the post-apocalypse right. Apocalypse, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, but then the rich people will be like, you know, I have 12 zombies pouring, pulling my carriage, and, you know, my family would probably have, like, one only part-time zombie, you know, just <laughs> be a whole class system. You have the one unmotivated zombie. You're yeah. Like, Why? I'm a vegetarian. Yeah. yeah, can you imagine that? Can you imagine the zombie, right, uh, who's torn mor with morals, uh, you know, because he can't eat meat? Can you imagine how, um, how torturous that would be for a zombie? Yeah. You know what vegetarian zombies eat, though? Grains. Sorry, a six-year-old told me that joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> and it's a funny joke. And she acted it out. And I was just like, okay, yeah. That's good. I have to tell my daughter that one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But they, I mean, if they, well, actually, I mean, yeah, if, they, if they're vegetarian zombies, so they can, they can eat fish. Uh, vegetarians then? But they could eat fish brains, maybe. Yeah, vegetarian uh, zombies. Yeah. But if they're vegan, but, they're completely shafted. Yeah, yeah. the vegan zombies, but you know, I don't know. There's just like, what if a zombie had a peanut allergy? And that's and and by the way, before I use trolls start yelling at me, I'm not making fun of people with peanut allergies. You don't know if I have one. I'm just saying zombies with peanut allergies like and somebody's just eating a lot of peanut butter before they kill them what happens what happens indeed yeah uh i don't know what could these, these are the things that keep me up at night if they're uh, if they're kind of, well <laughs> zombies are not quite dead are they they're undead they're, they're undead happening. they're undead yeah so perhaps they don't the they don't get allergies when they're undead. They only get them when they're alive. I don't know. I don't know. That and the other thing I always think about zombies, because I think about zombies a lot. Um, so they're always eating, but do they go to the bathroom? Oh, I've thought that too. I've wondered. Yeah, it's like, where, what's all, you know. I actually did a show where a vampire had to vomit, and um, the other makeup artist and I were just making up what a vampire's vomit would look like and we were just laughing hysterically as we were concocting <laughs> so i was like well, what would a vom you know zombie poop look like these yeah, are yeah. Would god knows i wouldn't like to think what it would look like that's for sure yeah <laughs> i think it would be a very pleasant thing to, to conjure up in my mind at the moment 
Well, and yeah. does peristalsis even work in a zombie? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <gasps> well, we, we, believe it or not, have covered everything. Uh, we've gone through, we've gone through so many extremes. I didn't I? answer the last question. Zoe didn't. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, Zoe didn't. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. I mean, you could skip me. It's okay. I'm not important. You're important. <laughs> um, <laughs> just a little self-deprecation there. Um, <laughs> what was the question again? Oh, uh, the important invention and not important invention, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I agree with Millie that the best and the worst is the internet, but I will specifically dive off into social media, specifically like Instagram, let's say for example. Um, why Instagram is terrible is one, it is the most pointless activity. You just scroll through pictures for hours and like them. I mean, there's no real gratification there. It's completely pointless and meaningless and a waste of time. Two, it creates people comparing themselves to others because everyone gives a highlight reel. They try to make themselves look glamorous and, and cool and interesting. And in reality, they're probably just sitting on their couch eating potato chips all day. And, you know, there's nothing really going on, but they make it look like their life is this spectacular, wonderful thing. So it makes everyone compare themselves and think, oh, I wish my life was like theirs. I wish my body looked like theirs. I wish I had their hair. I wish that, you know, I had that great of a life. And in reality, you have no idea if their life is even remotely like that. And it probably isn't. <laughs> it's probably posed, staged, edited, uh, face-tuned, all of that stuff. So um, I think Instagram is a terrible invention because of that. Um, also, I don't like the whole Instagram celebrity thing that we've yeah. created where these people can become famous for, well, having a fake life, having this life that looks so glamorous and perfect. Um, I'm not really a fan of that culture either. Um, mm. But the positive thing about something like Instagram is that you can find people with uh, similar interests to you. You can find like-minded individuals and you can get inspiration. Uh, like, you know, you can search nail art or makeup looks or uh, fashion inspiration or art inspiration. It's it's a cool way to find new restaurants and new places to go see. I mean, I found uh, waterfalls and different uh, like ghost towns and different cool things to check out in different areas from Instagram tags. Like, it's amazing how much you can find on there. <clears throat> but um, I think there's a lot of good things that come from the internet. And like I said, specifically Instagram, but there's a lot of bad that also comes from that. So that's my piece, I guess. <laughs> I agree with you. Influencers. What? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know who I am? I mean, that's, that's what I'm calling this generation. Do you know who I am generation? I actually just started on Instagram because my um, nieces were like, you have to. This is how, you know, you have to go on Instagram so you can see what we're posting. And I think I've done like 16 posts and not a single one used a filter. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, filter? Oh, I can go black and white. That looks cool. But it's like, well, why would I want that? This is what I look like. Uh, so, yeah. So mostly I've been posting for Tonta by Design. I will like do jewelry and it's eccentric ceramics. So I've been starting to post like yeah okay i'll post a few things yes okay nieces i'm on it and i'm posting <laughs> but yeah i just the people who post all the time and you know maybe i'll do an instagram life i'll make up a character and it will just be all the boring things that people actually do yeah <laughs> just like you know hey got that hangnail taken care of <laughs> hashtag blessed <laughs> 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 that's the kind of content I want to see oh yeah <laughs> I'm sure it's out there I'm sure somebody's doing it because I think I would follow that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yes the internet well we didn't have computers when I was young <laughs> you I kids to... were newfangled things <laughs> yeah yeah what yeah 
It is amazing, though, that I am holding a computer in my hand. And uh, my father worked with some of the earlier computers at the Pentagon in the 50s. And it would be an entire room yeah. for one computer. You know, and it's just, it's amazing. I remember as things progressed, when I brought in, showed him my first um, camera that didn't take film, because he always had, what's well, has got to have his uh, black and white camera and then his regular camera. And, you know, so we grew up, I think every stage of my life has been photographed. So maybe that's another reason I don't go on Instagram, because, oh, I've been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he was, he was just like, no film? No, f yeah, look, you can. Well, then how do you print them? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, just, I think he'd be amazed. He was a mechanical and structural engineer. So I think he'd be amazed at the internet and, okay. and what it can do. Um, yeah. yeah. And then he just called well, the rest of the Trisha's drivel. Guys, I think we're going to. We, we, I think we've pretty much covered it all. I think. Yeah. Uh, can and, we just uh, go around <laughs> and ask what everybody's been up to and where other people can find? Like Lisa, you said you've been doing some writing, and Andrea, I know you've got your YouTube channel and your films that you're making, and Zoe, whatever you're working on. Can we do that so people know where to find everybody? Okay. Uh, mine, and it doesn't have a lot up there now, but it's Smarticle Productions. Um, on YouTube and we just I've been doing the 48 hour film challenges and we we entered the global one and we shot a film called Tess Tetley girl brand manager uh, entirely we even had fight scenes we had a sword and bat fight um, and everybody was at their home so we did it all just filming and then the editor put it together and yeah. you can see that and we actually won um, to represent Washington State in the West. We didn't move on from there, but uh, I was like, really, like, what? We won? <sighs> you know, <laughs> so, yeah, you can check that out on Smarticle, S-M-A-R-T-I-C-L-E Productions. And uh, do watch Tess Tetley, Girl Brand Manager. And then we're just, we're doing some more Zoom films. So, there you go. Great stuff. Oh, and at Twin Peaks Heidi on Twitter. There. God, now I feel like a celebrity plugging stuff. <laughs> I wish I had a book or, you know, designer paper towels to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> next time, next time. I'm going to go out and get, I'm going to go out and make some designer paper towels. Right, write a book and I'll get you back in a year and we can talk about your, your book. Okay. Um, yeah. Because everyone's got, usually everyone's got a book out. Yeah. So, um, that would be really cool. Yeah, we can cover that. Yeah. Um, how about you, Lisa? What, uh, um, has there been any little projects you've been able to do recently? Um, right before the shutdown in February, I wrote and produced and acted in a short film. Uh, so that's in post right now. We were going to festival it, but now that festivals kind of seem to be not happening, we might release online. We're kind of... Um, we're playing around with that. Um, and that, uh, so that I'll have information on that. You can find me on Twitter at Lisa Coronado. Uh, and then other than that, I stream on Twitch, um, Monday through Friday, usually playing video games. And then Wednesday nights, me and a bunch of actor buddies play a RPG, uh, called void jumpers. And it's ridiculous. It's pretty fun. And that's, uh, at 6 PM. And you can find me, um, my Twitch handle is it's a smalls world. So Smalls is, is plural. My nickname is Smalls. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much it for now. I'm just doing lots of writing. I've written two children's books. I'm writing a third and then going to try to pitch them to get a, a literary agent. I don't even know that world, but I'm going to oh. try to do it. Uh, and if not, then just, you know, eventually self-publish. But um, they're fun books. They deal with tough issues for kids, uh, kind of in a sing-songy poetic sort of way um, that I think, you know, books that I looked for as a parent that weren't in existence and then I ended up writing them. So, yep. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant. Best of luck with that, Lisa. Um, how about you, Zoe? Is there anything um, you've been working on? Um, I mean, obviously, acting-wise, nothing really going on. Um, I mean, I have uh, a film that came out a year ago, I guess, um, 
that you can watch if you haven't watched. Uh, it's called Skin in the Game. It's about sex trafficking, and um, it's a very dark film. It's very educational. It's very good. It's very well done. Um, I believe it's on Amazon Prime, and uh, I think it's on. I think it might be on Apple TV. It's on a ton of different streaming services. You can also buy a DVD. Um, so there's that. And um, outside of that, as far as in my personal life and my personal creation and sanity, uh, I am restarting my YouTube channel because I was a YouTuber from ages 13 through like 17. And I was very into it. Uh, I, I went to VidCon every year. Uh, I fully was committed, made videos every week, and then I just stopped. And I guess uh, quarantine somewhat inspired me to come back, but like also I've been thinking about it for years and I'm just kind of now getting back into it and getting out and filming stuff. Um, I haven't put anything up yet, but I have a couple different videos in uh, the process right now. So uh, my channel is Zoe McLean 521 uh, when you go there, it's going to say my last video was like six years ago. Just ignore that because eventually something will be up <laughs> when I get around to editing. So um, that's pretty much it for me, I guess, um, right now. So are, are you, you are you a Screen Actors Guild, Zoe? Yes, I am. Okay. I've been asked to cast an online film, but you know, I'll get back oh. to you. <laughs> All right. I have nothing to do, so... <laughs> As we all have nothing to do, so I I'm down for whatever. I need I need people who can look, at least look like teenagers. So, oh yeah, I still play like fourteen sometimes. So, me too. No wow. one believes it, but I play it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, if I actually in your thirties, you'll be like, yes, I like baby face. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I'm I'm not mad about it and I mean like the only thing that's frustrating is like sometimes I don't usually get mad about getting ID'd because it, I, I understand like even if I looked older I probably still get ID'd so it doesn't usually bother me it's more so that when I go into a store with my boyfriend and he's buying alcohol and I'm not because I actually don't drink um, so it's like when I go into a store and he's buying something, and I'm just standing there, and they're like, I need your ID. And I'm like, it's in the car, and we parked down the hill. I don't, I'm not drinking. I promise you, I don't drink. Like, this is not for me. And they force me to go get my ID. That annoys me. <laughs> but yeah. that's more like store policy. That's not really their fault, but that does hurt yeah. me. So I'm like, if I looked a little older, maybe that wouldn't happen. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I had my ID taken away when I was 23, almost 24, and I was, I was buying beer, and the guy at 7-Eleven, it's like, this is obviously fake. You're 16. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, oh, what, what? And and he took it. Thank God he didn't cut it up. But I had to go in the next day to talk to the manager. And, uh, you know, it was just like, give me my ID back. Wow. <laughs> he had no right to take it. So. <laughs> no. Anyway. I think we're running out of time, Frank. It's going to probably stop in a minute. All yeah. right. Mini. And I'm running out of battery. This was yeah. fun, though. This was fun, though. So yeah. yeah. I hope you all enjoyed it. Anyway. Thanks, lady. Yeah. Yeah. It's been lovely having you all here. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Millie, again.